G'day everyone, um, welcome to Mark and Sam After Work. Um, today I want to go through a quick video on this Remington 700 Police Special and the final build that you're looking at here. Um, we went through a range of processes, started with the rifle um, in this stock here, which was the, um, the HS Precision stock, uh, which is a lightweight stock, uh, which I went through a video and I'll link, put a, a link on there on the video that we did here. Uh, but it was, listen, okay, as the rifle was, not very comfortable with a very rigid butt pad, very light, um, and trigger was um, not awesome. Um, started in that process, um, and it, basically I, I did some adjusting with the trigger, as I find in, as in general with, uh, with the Remington triggers, um, they're the bit that I first count on having to replace to approve the rifles. I did adjust it, took it down to minimum of what it seemed to operate at, found it became a little bit irregular, probably could have done some more work at that stage, but really wasn't planning on keeping with it, and in general I would suggest to replace a Remington trigger, um, it's certainly what I've done, and that's what I did. What went into it back then was this trigger tech trigger, um, which I'll put a link on what that trigger is, but it's not the top of the range, it's sort of second down, this has a minimum weight of one pound, which is about spot on for what I wanted out of this rifle, um, and I was really happy with it. I've used dual triggers, largely used the Timney Kelvin Elite, really like that, I run them a bit under a pound. Um, this trigger tech ticket trigger um, is very nice, I'm very happy with it, can't speak anything more about it at the moment. The shooting I've done in this, it worked really well, I was really happy with it. In the long term I'll tell you which I prefer, but certainly a good starting point doing that trigger. Um, before I get on to what I did here, I did some other simple things when I had that stock on it. Um, I had this um, simply put on a very simple, this is a slip on butt pad We're in the limb saver that I put over the back of it and I put on a simple strap on, this Bistoli um, cheek rest, very simple things I put onto that stock, made it a lot more comfortable to shoot, still not ideal, still not perfect, but in that form it shot very nicely and I was happy with it. And we did the testing with the likes of the... Um, Oh, There's a video I'll put on a link to um, that. I'll put on some, a bit of the image of that around. where we shot it like that. We put on the so EXT an um, using a normal um, sorry, the XT bipod extension system. Uh, put on there and it shot very well, shooting off the shoulder and off the bag. Uh, these two features really helped with that stock, made it work quite Can't nicely. Where it hit, but but it's not something around. that I was planning on using for a length of time, but I did use it like this. And if you didn't want to do anything else, they turned it into something that was decent and comfortable to shoot. It started a group like that. Get on play. Anyway, what we had the plan of was to put it in this chassis, which is the new, the Gen 2 version of the, of the MDT, Modular Driven Technologies, uh, the LSS chassis. Um, looks a bit different in this form at the moment, and I'll walk, work through that, what we actually did with it. We, I, I went through, I put a muzzle brake on it, so I thread the barrel, um, simple thread in the barrel to, and put on one of my, this is our, what we produce ourselves, um, which is the 4AW, but the three-port muzzle brake, put one of those on it, um, look good, shoot well, um, obviously I'm biased, it's our system, but the, a lot of reports from people using it around the world, you know, good at cutting down percussion, good at cutting down dust from, from muzzle blast, but a, just a pretty good muzzle brake in general. So put that on, that was an obvious feature going to go on there. Um, the other thing I did at that stage, didn't have this stuff here at the moment, this is my bipod system and this guardrail which I'll explain a little bit, but what I had put on the bottom of this chassis was a, full, was a rail on here that I just ran a, a both, we tested the, e, um, the EXT system on here as well, went really nicely, but largely we're using just the normal Atlas bipod on the front here and it shot really nicely. Um, this was using all the standard rear end up here of the MDT system down the back here, their new butt rest, very comfortable, very nice to shoot, got a bit of a story about that. But the thing I had put on here was this, um, our bag rider on the back here, um, and I'll go through a little bit of that in detail, it, it just a bit further in the video, but that's the form we're shooting at, and what I wanted to get to was we took this rifle out with our other Remington 700 308. Now that one's um, the SVF, so it's the stainless varmint or stainless fluted varmint system, uh, rifle. Uh, that one's in a very customised Bell and Carlson stock, so custom bipod, all the bits and pieces um, in a different format. 
shoots really well, really love that rifle, really good, looks good and shoots well. Um, I would say, they shot very similar, same data, everything was on it, we were shooting out at the 1250 yards and the 1480 yards or 485, I got some image on there, they shot really nicely, both me and Sam were swapping around between them. The notable bit I came out of it was that this, um, the way this rifle shot, although the same sort of accuracy, same sort of consistency everywhere, this, in this chassis, was a little nicer to shoot. It's a little more comfortable, a little nicer on the shoulder, and the whole, the whole movement of the rifle, just a little more settled in this chassis. So, nice feature for it. Not really um, the, the, the um, Bell & Carlson is a modified, bedded, lots of work done to it, and shoots really, really well. But just in a comfort zone, this felt a little bit nicer. Um, I would say, and I'll go on to those couple other features. This um, bag right on the back here, this is something that you can purchase from us. We are able to sell them. I'm not, I'm not really ready to bring them to market. This is the raw form of it, piece of aluminium machined out, um, made with slots on the front here, on the top here, that will slide onto and sit in any position on a Picatinny rail. Um, multiple points where you can put in the, <coughs> the clamping bolts to put in here. You could also clamp extra weight inside here if you wanted to. Um, all those features are in this, really designed for any rifle that has a Picatinny mount or a Picatinny rail can be mounted at the bottom of it. Made to go on a Picatinny rail and made to be a position wherever you want. The bolt holes aren't positioning points, they are simply clamping points. The negative I've got, which I'll share with you, is I haven't managed to get them machined at the price that I need to get them machined. Um, the CNC shops I'm using, the tooling they need to do to cut this groove out the scent here, uh, it's essentially, I can't get them to market for less than $150, uh, 150 US, which I think is about $50 too much. Still a very good system, going to work great, go on anywhere, um, but like I said, a bit more than they want to, I've got to try and find a, a way to make that cheaper, but if you want them, I can get them made, that's not a problem whatsoever. I've made a little wedge that runs on the bottom here, um, and I should note on that that MDT, from what I know, in the not too distant future, are going to be coming out with a bag rider and a system to well, Bigatini rolls on in a level form. Haven't seen it yet, but from what I know, that's coming. But like I said, with this bag rider, this system can go on yours. Um, this system is made to go on any Picatinny rail at the rear, where you'd normally mount a monopod or that sort of stuff. This is made to go on there. Anyway, that's that bit. Um, I should say I've also mounted on the top here um, one of these US Optics um, twi swivel um, bubble levels. Um, I've heard uh, mentioned a few times that they, uh, people don't like them because they don't go on straight because they're not dead level. Um, in some cases they're right, when you put them on they're not dead level. Not that complicated to fix, I've done lots, most of my rifles run this system. Um, I simply use an El Cheapo, like a $5 set of feeler gauges, I level up the rifle, I put it in here, find out what how much I need to shim it to make it level, then I snip a bit of that feeler gauge off, put it in here, lock it up, and that then is level and stays that way. Like I said, $5, I use that for any sort of, of that style of shimming, so it's an easy place to buy shim material, multiple choices, and I can get it right on that form very easily. Anyway, that's that. Um, I've also modified, I've drilled down, the, <laughs> taken off the Remington 700 and put on a proper bolt knob, uh, this is the TAC-1 bolt knob from Hinterland Shooting Supplies. Um, I do that in a very simple, um, I suppose, crude form. I simply grind off, you can use a file, I use a linishing belt, but I simply grind that, the bolt knob, the original bolt knob down into a square of the dimensions I want and then shape it carefully to get it round, carefully going around, filing, I like I said, linishing belt, get it round, then thread it, then screw this on, bit of Loctite, and we have a proper mounted screw-on bolt knob on there. So that's just nicer, nicer feature, works easier to function the gun with, um, and still a nice looking bolt knob. Um, other than that, I've mounted a 40 MOA rail on the top of it, and you'll see what I've done with this one. I've mounted my favourite scope on here, which is the Night Force Attacker. Um, this Night Force Attacker now is being very... Um, budget friendly for me, I'm running this on the top of four rifles. This is running on my, the 6.5 Creedmoor in the Hower, I'm using this same scope, 
on the 50 cal build, I've got it on another rifle I'd use otherwise, and I've got it on this one now. Um, what I'm doing to do all that, most of them, there's either 60, there's a 30, there's, a, there's two 60s, and there's this, which is the 40 MO rail. I can adjust it with this air attack base that's it's staying mounted in, having a 0 to 70 in 10 MOA increments lets me adjust between them. Um, ideally I'll probably end up where all the rifles have a 60 MO rail so I end up with more external adjustment in the thing but it's a nice flexible system that means I can run this which I think like, it, to me is my favourite scope um, and I'm running on multiple rifles without having to have multiple scopes. I have a few of them but they're on other rifles but this one's running on it like sharing amongst a few. We'll move forward to this front, <coughs> excuse me, this front bipod system. For those who don't realise, this is my bipod, bipod system um, and I haven't actually fired this rifle with it yet. What I did find with a lightweight chassis system up the front here, it's a half barrel guard, is that good and lightweight and I think for hunting and for most tactical work and that sort of stuff, awesome. Lightweight, still got your, your M-lock bits and pieces on the side to use it, but I found that it was a little bit flexible. Um, it didn't cause me any accuracy issues but I tend to just notice. It's one of the things that nags me a little bit. I want as much rigidity and I don't mind extra weight in my chassis either. And someone actually asked if we could build something to bolt our system. I, I have this system I can mount up on the front of this sort of chassis with a system that bolts or, or either bolts the chassis or has quick release to go to Picatinny rail, has a little swivel out the front and then mounts the bush up in front to mount my bipod system on it. This bipod system here I have is my system. It has essentially two shells that clamp together around a bush on the front of the rifle that the rifle rotates through the centre of it like that. So it's a nice high centre of gravity. It lets the legs fold away to nothing up the side here. So you fold them both away and you can slide along the bottom here and use it on your bag or that sort of system. You can also mount on the bottom here the likes of the the XT extension system can plan on the front to tripods mounting on it to a normal bipod mounting on the front of it. All those things are still operated while it has this guard on it. Um, the, what, the system I have that normally would go on here bolts on um, with a mount that goes on the bottom here with a universal joint or with a, with a swivel joint to set up your bush on the front to put these clamps on. Um, should say, I haven't mentioned it, these are the atlas, the long atlas legs that I'm actually using on the, on the side here, but carry on with this. A, uh, we got an inquiry of could we make this mount to run on the front of a, one of these chassis, the LSS chassis, or any actually half mount chassis with the same sort of, or half barrel guard chassis with the same sort of um, width to it. I thought about it and I came up with this here, this is actually a couple of generations into it with making um, M-lock mounts or something that accepts the M-lock system which you can slip over the front, take the muzzle brake off, slip over the front, slip your bolt through here and lock them on and I came up with this system that worked and, and worked nicely. This went on, I noticed instantly had a little bit more rigidity in the feel of the chassis. Um, so I decided to design this long one. Just longer, it clamps down. There's actually four mounting bolt points on either side and it really made a lot more rigidity to the chassis. Add a little bit of weight so it's not going to suit everybody, but for me it suited really nicely. I get my bipod system on the front of it, really wide stance, a bit more rigidity and a little bit more weight. So worked really well on that score, super happy with that side of things. Um, and listen, that's about the cover up. It's, um, oh, I should say there's another feature <laughs> that I had noticed. Um, this is an AI um, magazine. Here I'll pop out the MDT magazine. Both 10 round magazines. The way that the MDT system are doing, they're stacking the bullets a little bit um, closer together or they're, they're a tiny bit wider in the internal dimensions. So they're actually running shorter magazine for the same 10 round capacity. So a nice feature, just shortens it up, makes it a little more flexible, makes it a little bit nicer, just sort of something, something I'd mention. So, we'll get that back in there. It's a little bit tight still at the moment, it's all brand new, and I've only just used it. So, 
I overview of this rifle and where I'm very happy with it is working really nicely, working really well. Um, front to back, it is action and barrel and bolt, apart from the bolt knob, uh, all factory Remington 700 police, police special. I've threaded the front of it, put on my muzzle brake in the front, so it's got one of our three port muzzle brakes. <laughs> this one now, it shot very well and we did some shooting as I said. Um, in comparison with the other rifle, but shot very well in the normal, just with the Picatinny rail mount on the bottom here and the old bipod shot very well. This now has our system on the front of it and I'm really happy with how it feels. Haven't shot it yet, but I'm confident it's going to be spot on. Um, and I like the look of it too. It's just got a little bit more of a look about, a little bit more of the, the black and, and um, flat dark earth. It's sort of looking impressive um, and I have all those features of the fold away side of things and I'm using my bipod. Night Force Attacker Scope, Air Attack Mount, 40 MI rail, um, U, uh, the US Optic Swivel Bubble Level, um, and down the back here, the MDT butt stock, which is really nice, really comfortable, really happy with it, um, and I've just got this bag rider on the bottom of it. But this one is now ready to do a little bit of work out there. It's, it's um, started raining now, so there's a little bit before we can get out and do some more testing with it, but I'm super wrapped with it. I think it looks really good, and um, for a boring old 308, um, I think it's going to do some good stuff for us. Anyway, <laughs> um, I hope you like the look of our rifle. Um, give us a yell with any questions. And other than that, thanks for checking us out, and we'll um, catch you next time. Thanks for watching the video, guys. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, down below here, we've got a link to our web store where we have some of the specialised long range shooting products that we actually produce. Check them out. And for those of you who can, it'd be great to get some help. In our store we have support bits and when you purchase those the money goes direct to our channel and helps us bring these videos to you. Thanks guys. See you next time.